<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel? You get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos, except for that one time. So press the subscribe button for an extra greeting. All right, folks. I feel like this video is gonna be a little more ranty, if that's a, that's a word. So I apologize in advance if you don't like videos like that, but I have a lot of opinions on this subject and it's my YouTube channel, so I, so I can do what I want, all right? I've been using TikTok pretty regularly for like a year now. I've been making fun of it for two years, but like for the past year, I've been like actively like like consuming content on there and creating content on TikTok. And I've seen a lot of really like great, original, creative, funny content on TikTok, which is great. But lately I've also seen another side of TikTok that is just the complete opposite of that. And I wanted to talk about it today because there's a lot of things that have happened on TikTok in the last few weeks that illustrate how I feel about this subject and just how I feel about it outside of the platform as well. So let's get into it. There's a pretty big group of people on TikTok who are self-proclaimed lovers of dark humor. And as much as I wish that meant telling knock knock jokes with the lights off, uh, that's not what they mean by dark humor. And I hate to sound like a high school student phoning in an oral presentation, but Webster's Dictionary defines dark humor as a form of humor that regards human suffering as absurd rather than pitiable, or that considers human existence as ironic and pointless, but somehow comic. So remember that definition going forward, okay? Just keep that in your skull your brain to be more specific. And the example given on the Wikipedia page for dark humor is act three, scene one of Romeo and Juliet, where Mercutio is stabbed and Romeo says this, courage man, the hurt cannot be much. And then Mercutio says, no, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough, twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow and you shall find me a grave man. So just remember that, keep that in your skull. That is the definition of dark humor, okay? And personally, I've always found it very strange to be a self-proclaimed lover of dark slash offensive humor. Like if I meet someone and they confess that about themselves to me, I'm not only exiting the conversation, I'm exiting whatever room we're in. I don't, I don't care where I am. If I'm on an airplane, and the guy next to me says, you know what, I actually like, I have a pretty dark sense of humor. I'm gone, okay? I'm recreating the opening scene of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Because in my experience, when someone says, I guess you could call my humor a little twisted, <laughs> a little uh, dark, edgy. All I'm getting from that is, hey, I like to say racist, misogynistic, and sexist things without getting in trouble. And some of you may know there's been a lot of controversy and drama around a few people on TikTok who specialize in making controversial or offensive jokes. And it all sort of bubbled up into this big thing and I wanna cover it today and kind of give my two cents on it. Well, we don't have pennies in Canada anymore, so round that up. I wanna give my nickel on it, my two nickels. <laughs> but yeah, based on what I've seen on TikTok, this video is probably gonna get a lot of hate. But just remember, no one can hate me more than I already hate myself, okay? So good luck, Chuck. It's a Dane Cook movie. Let's go. So there's a whole lot of drama and controversy going on recently uh, with this creator named uh, Donald... 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 Don Eli J... Don... <laughs> what if the next 20 minutes of this video is just me trying to say this correctly? Donald... Donny, Donald... Donald Dijon. Dijon. That's the video. See you guys. His name is Chris in real life, so let's go with that. I'm sure some of you may have seen his videos before, but Chris did this thing where he would uh, react to uh, certain videos by making like a happy face and then a sad face. Pretty harmless in theory, but in practice, not so much. Let's watch a quick one. That's, that's hilarious. That's groundbreaking. That is the pinnacle of comedy. This is all he did, by the way. This was the, he made the exact same video like a hundred times. And it was usually him reacting to someone who uh, wasn't sticking to like conventional like gender norms or someone who was just a part of the LGBTQ plus community just being themselves. And, uh, and people were pretty upset about this content and rightfully so. Like when I watch this, it doesn't seem like a funny haha -ha joke, right? Like he's not changing the content at all. He's not commenting on it or making like a new joke about it. It's just smiling when he sees something that he likes or he's okay with and then 
making a shocked, disturbed face when he sees something he doesn't, you know? But funny enough, while I was scripting this video, his account got banned from TikTok. <laughs> so I can't show you all the comments that I wanted to show you guys, but for the most part, when he would make a video, all the comments were like, here come the snowflakes. Hey, here comes a blizzard. I have never had an original thought in my life. And when his account got banned, all of his fanboys and his, his fan pages were like, how could you, hey, come on. How could you ban him for simply He's making faces? He's not even faces. saying words. Hey, these are just faces. faces. How do you, do you ban him from making faces? Face. Wow. And that is so goddamn stupid. Cause like, hey, if his videos were just a video of him going, oh. he wouldn't be fucking banned, that'd be fine. It's the context of why he's making those faces, right? It's also so goddamn stupid to think that the only way you can convey a message is to speak it, right? <laughs> Hey, what's your deal? My name's Key. 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 Hey, I think one of you guys dropped your sign. Oh my god. Are you beating up another Keith again? Why do you hate Keith so much? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't put words in my mouth, buddy. I never said that. I never said I hate a guy's name Keith. Come on, what I'm doing right now? <laughs> this is harmless. See, he can't even feel it. Yeah, cause he's dead. Rest in Keith. To further illustrate my point, uh, here's a video. So what conclusion do you reach when you see that video? You would think I like dogs and I hate cats. So with that logic and you apply it to his videos, you can see the underlying message that he's portraying, right? But before I get comments about this, there were also people making the argument that he was making these expressions because he wasn't expected to be like attracted to maybe a boy dressing up as a girl or vice versa. But that explanation is just total bullshit when you watch his other videos. For example, he duetted a video of Tony Lopez and Nikita Dragon. Oh, my two favorite influencers in the world who only do good, amazing things. Uh, but the video starts with Nikita singing into Tony's neck. Chris loves that, Chris loves that part. But when Tony goes and kisses Nikita, Chris doesn't like that, he, he didn't like that part. And let's, let's just take a look at these comments, really like quick content warning for transphobia, um, but let's take a look. That's two men and no one can tell me otherwise. Why did two guys kiss each other? And then we got one from the guy whose profile picture is Chris. Ayo, those boys sus. I screenshotted these like before the account got banned, but there was way more, like hundreds and hundreds of transphobic comments left by people with this Chris guy as their profile picture. So, hey dude, you're not really just making faces, are you? The content that he was making was creating a toxic and hateful environment that was spreading transphobia. And it was just full of people making insensitive jokes about shit they know nothing about. And also quick sidebar, when did, when did the term sus become a slang term for homosexual? I feel like that's really weird, right? Cause sus to me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought sus was short for suspicious, correct? So if you're gay, then you're suspicious. That's the new term, I guess. You have to come out as a, as suspicious. And there's gonna be a suspicious pride month every year. I mean, like if the video, <laughs> if the video in question, if Tony Lopez and Nikita Dragon were both wearing like face masks and like long sleeve white and black striped shirts and they had big bags of money around, like over their shoulder. Yeah, that's super sus. They just robbed the bank. I don't know, I just think that's super weird. But uh, back to what the video is about. So with all this going on, this Chris guy had like a lot of people coming to his defense. He had like a lot of TikTokers like sticking up for him and being like, this is fucked up. And also he had the universally loved and respected YouTuber come to his defense, Keemstar. Unban Donald J right now. So I feel like that tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> Cause holy shit, man, if you're ever in some sort of controversy or a scandal and Keemstar's on your side, oh, uh-oh, you fucking never wanna be on the same side as Keemstar, dude. Like if Keemstar made a video tomorrow and was like, you should drink water and eat food and get a good amount of sleep every day. Get a coffin ready for me? Cause I'll be dead very soon. Cause I'm not doing any of those things. See ya. He doesn't even say anything. And oh my God, dude, there was another, TikToker who was really upset about this Chris guy getting banned and he made probably the worst video 
I have ever seen in my life. Yo, imagine making that. <laughs> imagine making that video, dude. Imagine like setting your phone down and then running to... <laughs> you better watch out for my neck beard. Like straight up, this guy looks old enough to be my dad's dad. And his number one priority is to piss off teenagers on an app. Also, bro, if you're over the age of 18, don't have those fucking LED lights in your room for sure. For sure don't have them, man. You see where the wall meets the ceiling? All those lights? <laughs> yeah. They changed colors. Saw them in a tweens TikTok. Had to put them up for myself, yeah. <laughs> I'm so young, it's insane. But in that TikTok, he said he's gonna make offensive jokes until Chris was unbanned. So let's take a look at one of those offensive jokes, shall we? <laughs> Real nice. So not even a joke, really. <laughs> Just you admitting that you're old and then body shaming a kid. Dude, that's so fucking funny, bro. Fuck, I wish I thought of that. Okay, I found another video from this guy. I wish I saw it earlier, but it's comedy gold, guys. Let's let's watch it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. this is the little girl's room. Uh, I identify as a little girl. Oh, okay. Aw, oh, hi, sweetie. Oh, I identify as a man today. Oh. Where's the where's the men's restroom? Oh, it's uh, to the left. Thank you. Pack it up, every other comedian in the world. He won. Like, if you're gonna make an offensive joke, at least make it a joke. It's pretty easy. Set up, punchline. Like, hey man, if that shirt of yours was any smaller, I would have confused it with your penis. There's a little quick joke for you. Or was that too sus of me? This is just a prime example of what I said earlier. You don't have a dark sense of humor, man. You're just a fucking asshole. And this is the behavior that Chris's fan base was displaying. Uh, this TikToker named Toby, who is a very sweet, funny, nice boy, may I add. He made a video about Chris that wasn't even that bad, like at all. And he had so many people roasting him, so many people making videos about him, people like Chris's fans sending him death threats and shit, which is pretty telling about the videos, right? Like if his videos were actually innocent and just him making faces, his audience wouldn't be so fucking evil, right? But the content is inherently judgmental, so it attracts a judgmental audience. Moving on, sort of. There was another recently banned TikToker who came to Chris's defense that I want to talk about. Before all this stuff even happened, I got so many messages to make a video about this guy after I talked about Russell Hartley. And I really didn't want to, but I mean, I feel like I have to talk about him if I'm talking about dark humor on TikTok. But I'm not going to say this guy's name, okay? Because one, no free clout. And two, this guy creams his fucking cargo shorts whenever anybody makes a video about him. So we're just going to call him buzz because he has a buzz cut and he kind of reminds me of buzz McAllister from home alone and he is the exact same height as a buzz lightyear doll <laughs> he is that big <laughs> i'm just kidding that's not true but wow holy shit that'd be so funny if you met him and he was literally that big you're like whoa man <laughs> so this guy's name is buzz official on tiktok he used to be called buzz jokes but he got banned for some reason i guess it was uh, all the terrible hate speech that he was spewing is that's just my guess or maybe they banned him for lying because his name was buzz jokes but i i never seen a real original joke from him coronavirus what tequila corona tequila <laughs> <laughs> and I could go on all day about how this guy's a misogynistic If you're pretty without makeup, then you're pretty Trump supporting anti-masker We don't care But that's not what this video is about, okay? And I also could talk about the fact that he's friends with the underwater horse from the 50s who has sex with phones, Russell Hartley But that's not what the video is about either This video is about offensive humor, so let's stick to that, alright? So let's take a look at this guy's dark, twisted sense of humor People of all colors need to speak up at a time like this. You know, for a girl telling us all to speak up and use our voices, you sure do whisper a lot. <laughs> Good one. You're a terrible person. Why you say that? Because of all those terrible jokes you made. What jokes? You know what jokes I'm talking about. The ones that were racist, sexist, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic. I never made any jokes that were homophobic. 
You get it? <laughs> you get it? The, cr the crux of the joke is... You guys get it, though? Let me explain. The, the crux of the joke... He's saying he's never made homophobic jokes, but he didn't reference the other jokes, so he, he's confirming that he did make those jokes. Genius. That's the thing about this guy. I've never seen him make an original joke. Like, he always makes videos about, like, yeah, I've, I've made these jokes, and people are getting mad at me for all these jokes I make, but I've never seen him make, like, a... Re a fucking actual joke. Well, I mean, maybe he did. There's no way to know because his account got banned, which is brutal. Any joke I've made, you can find it no problem because you know why? Not banned. You know why I haven't been banned? Because it's super easy to not get banned. <laughs> I feel like the reason this guy pisses me off so much is I've met this type of guy dozens of times at open mics when I started doing stand-up comedy. There are dudes who peaked in high school who spend way too much time with their friends who also peaked in high school. And they make the same jokes that they made when they peaked in high school. And then one guy will just be like, dude, you're so funny, bro. You're so funny. You gotta try stand-up. But then he doesn't know how to actually write a joke. So they just say the most offensive thing they can to get some sort of shock value or any, any sort of reaction from the audience. I've seen it so many fucking times and I hate it so much. But holy moly, would I love to see this guy do stand-up. Wow. All right, so sexual assault's pretty funny, right? I had one joke, people got really mad at me for it. What's the joke? Huh? What do you mean? Like, what, what's the joke? Can, can we hear it? <laughs> well, I don't, know, I don't know how to write a joke, so I kind of just said an offensive thing and then people got, people got pissed at me. <laughs> Yeah. What's my time? Okay, so you just say offensive things and then after the fact you claim them to be a joke so you don't get in trouble? <laughs> Coronavirus? <laughs> Corona tequila? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Don't let me saying that I've never seen him make a joke confuse you because he's made offensive videos before and he's called them jokes, but I don't see them as that. Cause you know, jokes are supposed to be funny. That's like their main characteristic. Like this guy has made several jokes about like sexual assault and he thinks that's just fine because it's dark humor. Like how disgusting do you have to be to think that's okay? Say it with me. It's not dark humor. You're just an asshole. Big trigger warning here for sexual assault, but I'm gonna show you one of his old jokes that he was super proud of. I can only find a duet of the original video because you know, guy got banned, can't relate. But the duet is from this guy named Tom Gray. He's very funny, but yeah, skip to this part if you don't wanna see this TikTok, okay? But it's gonna play in three, two, one. <laughs> Jesus, okay, you're a rapist, we get it. Like, whoa, hey man, the fuck is wrong with you? That is like the most traumatic, life-ruining thing somebody could ever go through, and you're just making a joke about it? Holy shit, like what an evil little man. Like I, a little man, he's the, he's the size of a Buzz Lightyear action figure. Like there's just so, there's so many other things you could make jokes about that don't invalidate people's trauma or make them feel like a piece of shit. Like if you're making fun of your own trauma and your own shortcomings, that's a whole different story, right? Like for example, my best friend Jacob, he was diagnosed with brain cancer earlier this year. And the whole time, the, through his chemo, through his radiation, he's been fucking joking about it the whole time. You know, because he's allowed to, he's going through it and that's how he's coping with it. And it's hilarious. And now we can laugh with him. Where I can feel my cancer getting worse. <laughs> oh no, no. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Ow. So maybe this Buzz fella should make jokes about his own trauma instead, you know, maybe like his own shortcomings. That'd be great. I'd, I'd be down for that content. You know, he can make a joke about how he lacks basic human empathy. You know, that'd be pretty funny. Or a joke about how he dresses like a substitute gym teacher. That's, those are just some suggestions. You don't have to do that because the content is bad, but those V-necks, dude, whoa, <laughs> even worse. And I know everybody has a different sense of humor, obviously, and freedom of speech exists, but to like, to die on that hill and having to like constantly defend what you're saying because thousands of people hate what you're doing. I just can't imagine being like, nah, I'm right. You guys are just sensitive. And it's a common conversation. Like over the last few years, whenever I tell people I do stand up, one of like the main responses is like, oh, I don't know how you do it. You know, you, you can't say anything these days. You can't joke about anything. And it's like, hey man, yeah, you can. There's, you know how many things there are in the world? Endless. And if it's like challenging for you to write a joke that isn't offensive, good. 
Fucking challenge yourself, man. It's so easy to just spew out hack offensive jokes that have been around for so long that our grandfathers say at Christmas that makes everybody uncomfortable. Anybody could do that shit. I'm not saying I'm perfect either. I've said things and made jokes about things in the past that probably weren't the best to make jokes about. But when someone calls me out for it, I don't sell, I don't say that joke anymore. I move on. I go, oh, fuck, sorry, you're right. But I mean, who knows? You know, maybe I'm wrong about this this dark humor thing. Maybe I am just a triggered snowflake. <laughs> you know, there are people out there who've made like huge successful careers by telling offensive jokes, right? Think of, you know, just for example, Louis CK, right? Man, successful, he blazed a trail, it was all smooth sailing for him. There's definitely uh, no evidence of him doing anything that shows a lack of empathy. It was, he had a great time for his whole career. I don't know, man, I think if you just have the option to write a joke that doesn't make people feel terrible or make a joke that does make people feel terrible, wouldn't you wanna pick the former? Not Buzz, Buzz wouldn't. Buzz would pick the latter because he's that short and he needs all the help he can get. <laughs> I know this video isn't gonna change anything and I'm sure Buzz is gonna make fucking videos about me, but I just have so many thoughts about this subject and I wanted to just get him out of my skull because there is a way to do dark humor correctly. I'm not saying it's like all dark humor is bad. I just think people are confusing dark humor with, again, just being an asshole. In conclusion, I, I think TikTok is a great creative outlet for people. I've laughed really hard and saw some really like just amazing content on the app. But like any platform, there's gonna be toxic and sensitive people who find a toxic insensitive audience. And the platform needs to do stuff about that. You know, it's why that Chris guy was banned. It's why Buzz was banned the first time. And it's the same as like Leafy is here on YouTube, right? I think the big world changing conclusion that I've that I've come to is uh, just, just try to be nice, you know? Try to show a little bit of empathy. Like if thousands and thousands of people are telling you what you're doing is wrong, maybe don't do it. <laughs> Unless it's people telling you to cut your mullet because you know what, they're just jealous and frankly, it's pathetic. All right, all that yapping has really tuckered me out and I've worked up quite the appetite. So let's go grab a bite while we learn about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Welcome back to the Brand Deal Couch. We're at it again. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you already know all about HelloFresh, but I think it's time for a quick refresher, okay? A Hello Refresher. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Do I even need to say anything else? No, but I will. Guys, I get it. It's super easy to get stuck making the same three meals over and over again, but HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you finally break out of that recipe rut. And don't worry, there's something for everyone, including low calorie, vegetarian, and family-friendly recipes every week. They got you covered. You know, I love trying new food, but it's always such a hassle to like find a good recipe, go to the grocery store, get all the ingredients, and maybe that grocery store doesn't have all the ingredients you need, so you have to go to another grocery store, and it's it's stressing me out just talking about it. But I don't have to worry about that anymore. HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and prepping by sending delicious seasonal recipes with fresh pre-measured ingredients right to your door. Also, another great thing about HelloFresh is their carbon footprint is 25% lower than that of meals made from store-bought groceries. And HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients mean there's less prep for you and less wasted food. So your tummy will be thanking you, and so will Mother Nature. Aww. And trust me, I know life can get pretty hectic, okay? But the lovely folks over at HelloFresh, they totally understand that. You can easily change your delivery days or food preferences, and even skip a week whenever you need with just a few taps. Or if you're feeling extra hungry one week, you can add extra dinners or lunches to your weekly order, or add in a meal compliment like HelloFresh's garlic bread, which actually slaps so hard it's stupid. It's actually offensive how good that garlic bread is. I could only eat that for the rest of my life, I'd be chill. We've been eating HelloFresh for a little bit over a year and a half now, and we love it like more and more each week. They're always coming out with new recipes and it's literally made our lives just so much easier. And I want you guys to experience that too. So HelloFresh has hooked up the citizens of Curtistown with a delicious deal. All you have to do is use my code 80 Town for a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first box with purchase. Easy as that. Go to HelloFresh.com to redeem and for more details. But yeah, if you like cooking or if you want to get more into cooking, HelloFresh is a great way to start. So yeah, check the description for all the details and the link. And uh, yeah, thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring yet another one of my videos. Love you. Bye. Back to me. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think about this whole situation. Let me know what you think, your thoughts. Let me know your thinks about uh, <laughs> offensive humor, dark humor, um, just as a whole. It is an interesting topic. Maybe I'm wrong about a few things, but you know, that's just my opinion. And don't like send these people hate or anything. That's not my intention. At the end of the day, these people are gonna do what they want. I'm just trying to create a conversation around it. And if you disagree with some of my opinions, <laughs> quit being such a fucking snowflake, dude. Here comes the blizzard. <laughs>
But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please press the like button. It really helps me out. And believe it or not, one like on this video equals one knock-knock joke that I will tell in the dark. So be careful when you turn your lights off. Uh, press the subscribe button if you want, because as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a valued citizen of Kurdistan. If you didn't know, Kurdistan is the best place to live in the whole world, and I'm the mayor. So you have to be nice to me, okay? It's the law, because I'm a snowflake. If you want to see other things I do, you can check the description. I got my podcast, weekly podcast. It's great, very, really good. Uh, I got my merch down there, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, all that bull crap. But yeah, that's the video. Thanks for watching. I'd stick around, but I actually have to go. I have to go grab scissors and turn all of my shirts into V-necks. So, see ya! Okay, okay.